This evening, we will learn about the mystery of Holy Communion, Mystera Kurban. Mystera Kurban is very important for us as Christians because often when we look at the history of early Christianity, the people thought there was something strange about these people who believed in Christ and said they ate his flesh and blood. You know, to make light of the concept, early Christians were thought to be cannibals. That they were eating human flesh and drinking human blood. But this is not true. All of us know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave flesh of his own flesh and blood of his own blood in the form of bread and wine. Our Lord takes this example from a place in the Old Testament that was very obscure and little understood, the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis chapter 14, it speaks about a priest even when there was no priesthood, a priest by the name of Melchizedek. The mystery of Holy Kurban, or the mystery of Holy Communion, is the mystery of how Christians enter into intimate relationship with God through eating his flesh and blood. We do not teach that the bread and the wine are symbols of the flesh and the blood. But we teach that through a mystery, through the liturgical prayer that we call Kadasi in the Ethiopian church. The communal prayer of the members of the church along with the priests who in one unison pray and ask God to convert and change the bread and the wine into his actual body and blood. Our Lord was revealing to his apostles this mystery that existed in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, in Genesis chapter 14, verse 18, it says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. So Abraham is the forefather of the children of Israel. Whenever Israel talks about God, they say, we are the believers in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so Melchizedek blessed Abraham as the priest of the Most High God. Not with an animal sacrifice as we see in the book of Exodus, but with a sacrifice of bread and wine. This was the ultimate fulfillment of communion with God. It was prophesied by Moses when he wrote Genesis. And so Christians today 
within the Ethiopian church believe in the mystery of Holy Communion. To understand this better, let's go to John's Gospel, chapter 6. In John's Gospel, chapter 6, our Lord is speaking to the Jews about eating the bread of life. In this chapter, in verse 35, he says, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst. Then, in verse 53, he says clearly, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He connects this by saying that these two are the same. Him being the bread of life and being the flesh that gives life. In verse 54, he says, Whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, I live by the Father. So he that eats me, even he shall live by me. Now our Lord makes this connection through his own preaching and through the preaching of his apostles. The apostles understood the mystery of Holy Kurban through the teaching of our Lord on the Last Supper. At the Last Supper, our Lord sat with his apostles on Holy Thursday, and he broke bread with them, and he taught them to eat the bread and drink the blood of Christ. And the Jews who were there, they had no clue that this bread would give them life. Let's look at what the Apostle St. Paul says about the bread and blood or wine that is eaten. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, St. Paul says in verse 16, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. So, Holy Communion is not cannibalism. It is the teaching that God revealed to his apostles on Holy Thursday that if they took bread and wine and blessed it, that through his power he would make it his body, his flesh, and his blood. And that if we eat this flesh and blood, we would have eternal life. And so the mystery is clearly taught in the Gospel of St. John, in the Epistle to the Corinthians, and in the Gospels of St. Matthew. And Luke. Holy Communion is how Orthodox Christians understand their intimate relationship with God. There are many people who talk about having a personal relationship with God. But how much more personal can you be than to eat somebody's flesh and blood? 
from the time of the apostles, a personal relationship with God was not determined by us having an imaginary belief that we were talking to God or walking with God. But it was determined by the fact that we, on Sunday and on days in which the Holy Eucharist is offered, eat the flesh and blood of God. And that makes us one with him. And we are one body of Christ as a result of our common communion together. This mystery draws us to understand how the mystery of the Incarnation is truly fulfilled. God became man so that man could become God. We can only become God-like if we have his flesh and his blood. Another teaching of the fathers of our church is about how the flesh and the blood is a sign within us to God himself so that God would have mercy. When we think about Holy Communion, Holy Communion is our way of expediting judgment. St. Paul writes about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. He says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. St. Paul is a witness to our perspective on Holy Communion. Holy Communion is not simply a memorialization of the death of Christ. He says that there were people who would eat unworthily and bring damnation to themselves because when they ate, they were eating the body and blood of Christ, not discerning it, not knowing it, but thinking that it's simply bread and wine. And because of this lack of foresight and insight into the reality of the Holy Communion service, they brought sin to themselves. St. Paul goes on and says in verse 30, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or have died. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. Holy Communion is like a way of expediting judgment. God's judgment comes to us early through taking Holy Communion. Through baptism, we move into a life that is one where we are being sanctified and cleansed of our fleshly passions and desires. And through intimate communion with God, we take his flesh and drink his blood. These teachings of the church fathers help us to understand that an intimate relationship with God is achieved only through Holy Communion. 
The eternal God has offered us eternality even though we are temporal. And so, Holy Communion, taken in good conscience, through confession, in belief, results in us receiving a blessing on the day of judgment and not a curse. In the Old Testament times, Moses prophesied about Melchizedek offering bread and wine. And our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, he fulfilled it. You know, in the Old Testament, there's also the story of Israel on the night in which Moses told them to sacrifice the Paschal Lamb. It says that the angel of death was coming to take the firstborn of all of the Egyptians. And it would take anybody who was firstborn if there was no blood over the door where the people entered in. So the Israelites sacrificed the lamb and took the blood of the lamb and smeared it over the door. And so the blood of Christ is smeared on us so that God does not give us a judgment of death. But as St. Paul, he says, we are chastised by God so that we do not receive condemnation with the rest of the world. The mystery of Holy Communion is how the believer enters into an intimate relationship with God, one of confessing our sins, one of repenting of our sins, and moving forward into a life that is as the one God demanded from Moses and the children of Israel. Be ye holy as I am holy, is what God told the Israelites to do. There are many who stay away from Holy Communion because they are living a life that is not approved by God. The church teaches us that after baptism, we are supposed to fast according to the seven fasting periods. We are supposed to pray daily. We are supposed to live a life in honor of what the Ten Commandments teach. Not to kill, not to steal, not to lie, but to honor our mothers and fathers. If we live our lives in these ways, and we make ourselves ready for Holy Communion, then God blesses us with sanctification and purification from our sins, as well as the gift of eternal life. The mystery of Holy Communion is God's way of intimately joining himself with us, restoring his image and likeness in us by our taking his flesh and his blood as part of the liturgical service and prayer that happens within our church. May God grant each and every one of us purity of mind, body, and soul through taking the body and blood that has been given to us through the mystery of Holy Communion that was shared by our Lord and Savior on Holy Thursday to his disciples and apostles. May God bless us and keep us until the day of the resurrection. Amen. <laughs>